yields to consider uh, this uh, non conduct conducive textile substrates and then inject and the screen printing print, uh, for uh, non conductive textile materials also available so here uh, i will uh, show one uh, tutorial about how to make uh, uh, pdms so before uh, starting this uh, fabrication process this i will show <coughs> <coughs> how to make the pdms just you can uh, how to make pdms this video. so the first thing that we want to do is of course wear gloves uh, and we need to actually prep uh, the containers that we're going to use so we need just a plastic cup and uh, two petri dishes with the tops uh, the first thing you're going to want to do before you even start making the mixture is uh, cleaning the cups out. So usually what I do is I just kind of three times rinse them with IPA. Um, and really the purpose here is just to kind of get the dust out. Um, technically even if the PDMS is a little dirty, it won't actually affect your stacking. Uh, you just don't want it to obscure your uh, when you're looking down at it with the microscope camera. So just kind of spray along all the surfaces here. Drying off. If it doesn't, we'll just blow it out more after we're done. So, actually, when we start the mixture, we do need the plastic cup. So, let's make sure it's a little bit more. So, now we'll try. <laughs> So you'll take your plastic cup that you just rinse out. 
place it into the scale, then zero it out. You don't have to worry about closing this every time. The numbers don't have to be really that precise. So it's not that much of a big issue. So the first thing we're going to take here is the Flyguard 184 elastomer base. Um, and I think the ratio here is uh, 10 to 1 um, by weight for this base uh, to hardener. So each petri dish takes about 16 or takes about eight grams of material. So we we usually make two petri dishes at once because otherwise it's too hard to mix the hardener and uh, and the base together. So what I will do here is I will pour in about uh, 15 grams of the base and another 1.5 grams of the hardener. And you don't have to be super precise, I just kind of let it trip. And then slowly tilt back, slow the drip as you approach your number. And that's good. And then close it up. And then place it back into the aluminum bin. And then your hands will always be nasty after doing this because everything is just covered in PDMS uh, mixture. So here we'll put in 1.5 grams. And this is always kind of tricky. You can even do this with a pipe head if you really want. In fact, the safer way to do it is with a pipe head. But, um, but this seems to work good enough. But if you don't trust yourself, you can always just measure it out more precisely. So we went about 0.1 gram over. It's not a big deal. I think even if you go like half a gram over, it won't make much of a difference. Um, so now that we've kind of put all this together, uh, we'll change gloves again because we'll take this off and then we'll start using the, uh, the mixer. We really don't want to get the mixer more dirty than we have to. So now that we've changed gloves, we can grab the plastic cup from the scale, close it back, zero it back, and then grab this. So ideally this guy should be cleaned after the last use. Uh, people should be cleaning after they make each PDMS, um, but always double check, make sure it's clean. Uh, in this case it doesn't look too clean, so we'll wipe it down some before using it. We'll just eat through the plastic uh, and really don't help clean up the PDMS any more than the IPA does. So let's clean the bottom of this. So it's all dusty. And 
now we're ready to go. So what we do here is just turn the mixer on to the lowest setting. Yeah, should, should be this guy. And now we'll just take this and start for 10 minutes. And usually I like to tilt it, try to get the most all in one conglomerate area so I'm not hitting the plastic cup too much. The trick here is you don't want to keep running the mixer into the plastic cup because then otherwise it breaks off plastic pieces and then you get large plastic chunks in your PDMS and then you have to kind of start over. So and after you've mixed for about 10 minutes, uh, we'll pour this into the petri dishes. So once you've done mixing it, um, it should look like this. There are a lot of air bubbles, etc. So what we'll do is we'll take this and pour it into our petri dish. Uh, you should take the larger side as your bottom. And then just put this side by side. Maybe do one little click. So nice and okay. And then we're just gonna pour. Wow. Just look at the pour. Try to do it kind of evenly. So I do like a little spiral in and out. I'll do some mixture for one and then continue with the other one. So I try to not put all in at once to what I think it should be. I try to put some in one and some in another. I find I get closer to half and half when I do it this way. Save this and throw it out. And then we'll take these, put a cap on them, shut off real quick, and put these inside of a vacuum desiccator for about two hours. So turn off the lights. Um, after we put these in the desiccator, we'll clean up the, uh, the mixer real fast with the IPA. So, this guy is the vacuum desiccator that we typically use um, for PDMS. You just simply turn this over to where the arrow is pointing up and down along the direction of the uh, valve. And then the other perpendicular arrow is pointing to the right, so away from the pump line. 
And then you just pull on this guy, open it up. When the noise stops, that means that all the air is coming. This is the atmosphere. Alright. So then we'll take this. We usually use glass slides to balance everything. And these ones are kind of terribly balanced right now. But just put them on top of each other. It's not too required to balance everything right now. And this is good enough. Um, yeah. I wouldn't worry so much about balancing everything right now in this stage because the PDMS isn't going to harden uh, while you're pumping on it. It's really only going to harden when you go to bake it. So I'll turn this guy here. Get on. So if it's properly pumped, you shouldn't be able to pull the top off. And now we just leave this for two hours. So just after you place it into the desiccator, you should clean uh, the mixer. That way the PDMS hasn't had much time to dry. It's a lot easier to clean um, during this period of time rather than later. Just give it a quick wipe. If it's cleaned every time, it really only takes like a quick wipe uh, to clean it off. Do what we did in the start. And that's it. Now we wait for two hours. So, once two hours has passed, you can just, again, vent the desiccator. And I think in this case, you want to do it a little bit slowly. So, you don't immediately pull off uh, the red tab. You just kind of let air go in very, very slowly so that it doesn't, like, blow up, <coughs> blow everywhere. Oh, my God. Okay. Your vent. Up the top. Leave the leveler in there. And pump the desiccator back down. And then take these guys into uh, into the 60 degree C uh, furnace. So a few things you want to check before you put it in. Um, you want to check the temperature first. So we always have a thermometer in there, and we always have this thermometer off initially uh, to save on batteries. We don't want to keep replacing the batteries. Um, so just quickly check that it is uh, 60 degrees. It, it usually varies between 50 and 70 degrees C. This, this oven is not very stable. So just quickly hit on. Sometimes it won't flick on, and then you just kind of have to press it a little for some reason. So 64 degrees C, that's totally fine. This thing is like really plus or minus 10 around 60 degrees C. So this is good. So now we just turn this back off. Uh, open the, the oven. Let's move everything else out of the way. And then here, uh, we'll place these guys in. So when we place these guys in, now we really do want to level it. If you don't level it, what will happen is the PDMS will be, you know, a lot more on one side and you'll have a large slope on your PDMS. And when you go to cut it to make PVC slides, it'll really lean to one side versus the other and your wavefront will be very weird. Um, so we really need to level it this time and make sure, again, we use glass slides to level it. So we just place it on the glass slides. This is a previous set of the glass slides I used before, so hopefully it's still good, but we'll see. Um, and then we use this little leveler. So we use the circular level leveler so we can see all three directions simultaneously. Um, and this guy should always be on top of this furnace. If it's not, uh, then someone's in trouble. 
So right now I'm just trying to level it, so I really just need to kind of raise this side more. But I raised it too much. Um, but now it's too long the side. So it needs to get lower on the side. It's actually a lot closer before. Come on. Uh, let's see. Where's this? It can be kind of painful to do this sometimes. Come on. So close. This is pretty good. Uh, well. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, and the way that this is now, it's, it's kind of good. So I'll very carefully take it off. Actually, I kind of want to double check now. Yeah, it's fine. Once you've double checked your bouncing, um, just make sure that you place this leveler on the top always. It should always stay here. Uh, make sure that the temperature monitor is turned off because otherwise the battery runs out. And then we run out batteries. As you can see, there's already three batteries on the top. Um, and then close the door gently so that you don't rock your sample because you don't want to be not leveled. You hear a little snap. And then that's basically it. And so you just wait about two days and the PDMS will harden. You can also just do 24 hours. Um, and depending on how long you let it harden, it will be stickier or not sticky. So if you really want something really sticky, then you just like let it harden over a course of like, I think half an hour and beyond. There's tables for this online that you can look up if you, if you feel like doing it. Uh, so then after that, you just remove it and then you're free to use it, cut it up however you want. These are the instructions uh, given for this uh, uh, making the PDMS. <coughs> okay, so uh, if you uh, watch very extremely uh, that uh, PDMS. Right? Okay, so uh, let's make PDMS. So in this process. So we need all these uh, chemicals to make this uh, PDMS initially. So even even if you have all those things, we can uh, make the uh, PDMS in even uh, your institute itself. Because we have uh, the nano fabrication lab here. So those people having most of the things, furnace and then uh, oven, everything they have. So only thing we have to purchase these chemicals and then we can make it, uh, we can prepare the PDMS in your institute itself. So these are the different steps. Uh, the first step, we have to purchase these uh, chemicals and then uh, you make this, then uh, prepare this uh, uh, one and then we have to keep it here. And then uh, finally, you can make this uh, PDMS uh, material. So in this material, you can uh, print any type of uh, antennas. So <coughs> it's the beauty of this PDMS. And then uh, the conducting or uh, radiating part consideration uh, for the fabrications. So one is using the copper sheet and then conductive fabric. So copper sheet uh, is the required radiator part can be precisely cut using electrical discharge matching EDM tool and then attached to uh, top of the polymer substrate using binder. And then uh, conductive fabric uh, can be cut using uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, printer that is a, a cameo printer according to the antenna shape using the software. Uh, so we have to make the design structure and then we can uh, use these conductive wings can be printed using the inject printer. So what are the PDMS uh, material made? So after that we can use this uh, inks can be printed on the material. So these are the polymer based antennas. Uh, so uh, once if you make the material and then we can uh, print on the material itself. So uh, this is the PDMS antenna. So, so on the material, 
So only the making material is somewhat difficult. After making the material PDMS, then uh, designing whatever your proposed uh, antenna structure, we can uh, print on this uh, PDMS uh, substrate. <coughs> so another thing is textile-based antennas. So, uh, so instead of having PDMS material, uh, so we can use textile-based uh, materials like uh, cloth materials as substrates. So textile antennas is mostly uh, used in body wearable applications. It's very easy fabrication and less cost antennas that uh, are easily installed in our uh, cloth itself. So it can be mount even if you have the iron box itself, you can make this antenna in the foam, foam. At foam itself, you can make, you can design this antenna. If you have uh, jeans or any cloth, so on that just a copper uh, connector and then if you have this, uh, uh, things we can uh, connect and then we can uh, test this one. So textile antenna fabrication. So it, it is a simple copper foil of very less thickness can be taken as a conductive layers and use the cloth as substrate and as for the user material. The conductive layers can be cut and uh, sweep to the cloth or uh, the conductive layer can be formed with the conductive uh, threads using embroidery technology. So embroidery uh, technology, even the button antennas and other things uh, can be used as embroidery technology or some uh, conductive fabrics are also used as uh, spraying conductive metal uh, liquids like copper or silver along the water resistive material and uh, nylon based fabrics uh, is used to conductive layers uh, are preferred. <coughs> These are the, some of the examples of uh, this uh, uh, the textile antennas using this uh, copper based and then uh, embroidery technology and then uh, metal spraying for uh, conductive layers on uh, cloth so this is the uh, techniques are used for textile antennas <coughs> so antenna analysis simulation analysis can be used as uh, ANSI HFSS uh, or CST micro studio be used to measure these parameters like reflection coefficient and then we the radiation patterns as they are the comparative analysis for bending without bending and with bending uh, similarly on both of uh, body can be presented here we did the, some case study of this antenna we have designed this is the straight uh, one this is the bending effect uh, so for straight one, it is the uh, normal convention one is it is getting minus 13 dB here uh, minus uh, 32 dB, a flat as well as bend uh, condition. So this is the uh, left arm we can uh, keep the phantom model uh, with the antenna we kept and then uh, we uh, measured on, uh, on hand flat and uh, bended things. So bended is uh, some uh, less reflection coefficient than uh, flat antenna. So it is getting minus uh, 13 uh, dB, here minus 22 uh, dB for the flat antenna. So these are the radiation characteristics uh, for uh, E-plane and H-plane on arm, on body, half body, this is on arm uh, phantom. And this is the SAR analysis for uh, flat as well as uh, <coughs> bent antenna. Here it is getting uh, 0 0.9 as uh, 9387 uh, for uh, uh, straight or flat antenna that is uh, 1.38 uh, is getting and this is the the different layers no whatever the skin uh, fat muscle and then uh, the stomach then uh, all the things are considered there for uh, transmitter antenna as well as receiver antenna so all these three four layers are considered then we can uh, place the antenna so then uh, we can uh, uh, see the different uh, uh, characteristics like uh, frequency also for mixed band and as well as ism band considered so 402 megahertz for 915 then 45 5.8 gigahertz then these are the tissue parameters like uh, sigma like uh, <coughs> the conductivity simon per meter then uh, permittivity epsilon r uh, then uh, uh, penetration that is uh, skin depth or uh, uh, the is considered for all the cases uh, for <coughs> dry skin, fat, muscle, and then bone. So these are the values for the conductivity as well as uh, the permittivity and then uh, penetration depth that is uh, calculated. So these are the implantable technologies. Uh, so what do you mean by implantable uh, technology or implantable antennas means uh, uh, it is not uh, uh, 
wearable on skin so it is it can be mounted inside the body so so inside the body we can uh, like uh, a heartbeat measurement and then uh, for uh, even in the pacemaker also we can uh, measure uh, we can uh, test or we can identify the pacemakers the functioning so like that we can use this implantable technology and then uh, uh, so implantable circuits are provided in uh, uh, real challenges are materials and then rfid uh, implant and then heart uh, pacemaker and implantable and then applications uh, can be used so normally sir can be measured in two methods one is a thermographic and electric field probe thermographic methods are uh, this is the uh, diagram so you can see the thermographic camera can be kept in the transmitter and antenna in phantom model and wireless camera models are, can be linked. so the generator and power amplifier power meters can be connected into this uh, transmitting antenna then finally the uh, thermographic uh, cameras can be captured the, the images. And, uh, thermographic methods offer more efficiency route uh, to establishing SAR over two-dimensional uh, internal plane within uh, an exposed model. And also, it is valid for both the far field as well as near uh, uh, field. Also, it is uh, it involves the use of a thermographic camera to record temperature uh, distributions produced by energy uh, absorption phantom models after exposure to radiating fields <coughs> and uh, the second method is called electric field probe method this is the more popular uh, method than the other method electric field probe method so this is uh, the electric uh, field probe method the rabbit or non-invasive SAR measurement solution is based uh, on utilizing automatic positioning system to move uh, an e-field measuring probe a liquid phantom to access SAR values. So this is the probe method is mostly used already they said the second method. So this is what we can measure the SAR value. This is the phantom that is a model, a human model, uh, the head and hand, uh, those things and then we can keep those uh, equipment and then we can measure the SAR value uh, things. Implant for communication. So, as per Peter Cochrane said, 1997, just a small piece of silicon under the skin is all it would take for us to enjoy the freedom of uh, no credit cards, passports, or keys. Put your hand out to the car door, computer terminal, the food you wish to purchase, and you would be dealt with efficiently. The total freedom. So, I said this plan for communication this uh, code for uh, noted so these are the plan of circuit design <coughs> so these are the simulation device for this uh, implantable external device as well as implant implantable devices like uh, the amplifiers uh, the uh, uh, adc circuit and then modulator demodulator all uh, power amplifiers all this uh, can be made using the asic design um, then antenna part uh, <coughs> can be implemented. So these are the size of the implement. Uh, so it's uh, like a build type of uh, uh, implantable antennas uh, was uh, developed. Uh, so in this, so miniaturization, miniaturizing the size of the implant, the material used, then battery. Normally the paper based batteries like lithium uh, iron batteries are used in uh, frequency, like uh, mixed band ISM bands. Then RFID implements for this uh, body area. So human RFID implant uh, carried out in 1998 by charge uh, So to provide identification information allows a Denise access uh, of this RFID. So this is the RFID chip, uh, microchip. So so this was a very a very very small uh, the pill type of uh, chips was uh, developed to, to uh, inject inside a human uh, even you can verify in this uh, picture so just the uh, the implant this uh, small pill type of uh, rfid is inside the human and so here it is in implanted then uh, heart pacemaker so pacemaker uses electrical impulses uh, delivered by electrodes uh, conducting the heart muscles to regulate the beating of the heart. The purpose of uh, 
uh, pacemaker is to maintain an adequate heart rate particularly and then either because uh, the heart is not uh, fast enough and there is a block in the conduction system so pacemakers are extremely externally programmable and allow uh, the cardiologist to, to select optimum uh, pacing models for individual patients see some uh, uh, sometimes this combined um, pacemaker and uh, uh, defibrillator in a single device so in that case uh, so the multiple electrodes simulating differ uh, differing positions within the heart to improve the synchronization of uh, lower chambers of the heart pacemakers so this is the pacemaker device then in the implantable antennas is a key component uh, for radio frequency linked to telemetry for medical applications so some of the following uh, the challenges so is the compact size that is a miniaturization then operating bandwidth is very uh, essential and then uh, sufficient radiation efficiency then importantly uh, the patient safety also uh, due to this uh, 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 the power so human hazards also we have to be to take care so the, the here in this uh, picture you can see the implant antenna is implanted and then uh, in the transmitter side and then uh, the receiver side patch antenna so this is 19 mm antenna so this is the uh, the implantable medical device and external device so the transmitter and, uh, the transceivers then miniaturization is the mantra of this uh, 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 the design of this uh, medical antenna or wireless body area network miniaturization is one of the main key requirements in developing implantable medical devices if the size of the device is too big it will cause inconvenience that the patient could feel its uh, presence so it be more uh, convenience to patient if the size of the device is too, uh, too much of the small uh, size and then implantable circuits can be made by using cmos technology but the antenna take most of the space in the device but the frequency of the uh, these antennas is uh, uh, less around 400 mix band only um, not where they are using uh, but uh, the size of the antenna is very high because of the mix band is all in mhz so miniaturization of the antenna is uh, to suit the implantable circuit is one of the main challenge and uh, the different uh, techniques to improve these challenges like using higher uh, dielectric substrates than using uh, pifa substrate kind of implanted f antenna and uh, lengthening the current path of the radiator then loading techniques for impedance matching then fractal geometry loop structures meta material structures are being considered for miniaturizing the antenna size then another thing is input power and radiation also very important uh, things so as per ieee 802.15.6 standards this w band wireless body area network related the devices should be low power so as too much power causes uh, high radiation that could cause uh, harm to human tissue over the long duration of usages so usually the input to power given uh, will be the range of a few milliwatts so it is uh, around the 10 milliwatts to 100 milliwatts using small uh, <coughs> better uh, and then uh, radiation from these devices are too less but uh, it should be enough to cover uh, one single room Uh, for this uh, medical devices uh, should be able to transmit to nearest uh, to for the monitor and then uh, the safety of the human can be depend on two things one is the specific absorption rate and then um, uh, the second one is types of uh, materials used so implantable devices should be biocompatible materials can be used already said zirconic or ceramic uh, so like that a type of biocompatible materials can be used for this uh, Thing. so to deal with these uh, challenges a bicompatible material is used to, to encapsulate the implantable medical devices so in recent years uh, the liquids uh, silk or micro uh, patterned gold are uh, used the antenna is designed to spot specific uh, proteins and uh, chemicals in the body that all uh, alert the doctors uh, wirelessly to signs of uh, disease so some of the researchers at uh, tufts university stated uh, recently that silk is a natural plat uh, platform for medical implants it is a uh, biocompatible and uh, while it is uh, uh, delicate and uh, pliable it is also uh, tougher than uh, tel kevlar so implanted in the body silk can conform to any tissue surface and unlike conventional polymer based implants it could uh, stay in place over uh, uh, a long period of time without uh, those effects so silk <coughs> also very 
more suitable or biocompatible material for the uh, human body. So we recently invented. And also, this is the example of implantation using surgical procedure on rats. So how the white rat, how the implant of devices, or implant antennas are, can be kept uh, and then uh, be measured, this uh, repression coefficient, all those things. And then these the applications of implant devices like identification, access, health monitoring, medical diagnosis, uh, neuro uh, stimulation, and then base makers, then uh, defibrillators. So body centric wireless communications. So this uh, very uh, suitable or accepted by the fourth generation communication systems, and then uh, body centric communications takes place uh, primarily with the uh, sphere of uh, personal area networks and body area networks. So I told you 802.15.6 standard is the latest international standard for wireless body area network. In short range, extremely low power wireless communications within or uh, in the vicinity of uh, human body. So these are the body centric wireless only soft body, on body and in body. So implantable device is, uh, is in, in body, then uh, uh, body one devices is off body that is external use, on body is the uh, also body one devices. Using this soft body, on body, in body, so can be uh, applied for medical health care, sports and fitness. Sports and fitness, uh, there uh, uh, even the wristwatch itself, they can mount these uh, devices and monitor the sports person as well as even the, for uh, fitness also, the military security, then gaming and environment, uh, sports activities also. Even nowadays, very small uh, pill type of uh, transceivers can be kept uh, in the uh, insects, uh, even for the, uh, the military security purpose. Uh, they can be kept on the head of the small insects and uh, then it can be uh, act as a spy for the different uh, <coughs> purposes in different places. And uh, the challenges of wearable antennas are uh, compactness and the design radiation characters, low cost, lightweight and multi-band operation and stable performance under varying conditions. And these are the design requirements or design conditions are needed when we designing the antenna for uh, this uh, uh, one the detuning and impedance matching. So detune uh, due to the human body loading effect and designer needs to consider the shift of in operational frequency band due to the human body effect and radiation characteristics particularly when we are concentrating on body communication. So we need wide beam or omnidirectional radiations is required for this uh, maximum coverage of the uh, body area network and then uh, the ground plane makes a shield for human so the radiation uh, won't transmit towards human body and also so we need to concentrate the size cost and weight so lightweight and compact uh, for easy, easy ease of mobility and uh, low cost uh, simulation so solution can attract large number of customers and then bending and uh, boomling so bending effect is very very essential for the impact of antenna performance and boomling has greater detuning effect on the antenna's resonant frequency bandwidth as well as reflection coefficient values and then positioning and the sensitivity so bending limitations and the scenarios can be determined based on the antenna placement and it need to be investigated the other challenges is to make the antenna uh, insensitive to the variation of the gap between the antenna and the human body and the safety consideration already uh, said uh, uh, the specific absorption rate. Uh, so we need to concentrate the power absorbed per uh, mass of tissue. We are need to calculate uh, using this uh, uh, mathematical formulation like uh, CR is equal to sigma e squared divided by rho. So two most commonly used SAR limit is specified by, for uh, this I to be 95.1 is uh, 1.6 parts per kilogram for any one gram of tissue and. Uh, the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection ICNIRP, uh, the limit is 2 watts per kilometer for any uh, 10 gram of tissue. Then analysis required for wearable antennas, so the effect of uh, human body interaction. So due to the high permittivity of the human tissues, the antenna resonant frequency will change and detune to a lower one. And relative permittivity of skin uh, decreases uh, with the increase of uh, frequency as the conductivity of the skin increases with the increase of uh, frequency. So we need to take care of all the these things because uh, the antenna permittivity may be very uh, less compared to the human uh, tissue as well as uh, bone skin uh, muscles. And then uh, 
the uh, analysis are required. This is for the SAR uh, set. So the, the, the under this uh, antenna can be mounted and uh, <coughs> even in the uh, head also. So the bending effects, uh, uh, we have to see the antenna performance. Uh, so we have to need to validate the performance and stability in bending conditions. A study on bending effects should be performed. Measurements for uh, flexible wearable antennas have to be done with uh, different bending positions. Uh, we need to change the different uh, bending positions like uh, angles can be changed. So uh, then we, uh, we can analyze uh, which uh, uh, direction or which angle of uh, bending uh, will get more better performance. Uh, we need to study the uh, 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 parametric study. And then resonance shifted towards the lower frequencies and the bandwidth became uh, smaller when uh, bent and independent of the bending direction. So one of the methods to overcome this was that antenna had to uh, be designed with a wide frequency band. And then some uh, on-body measurements like uh, positions of wearable antennas uh, will uh, potentially differ depending on the application of the antenna. So wearable antennas uh, might be designed to be placed on the chest and the arm back of the body. So in different places we can keep the antenna and then we can uh, uh, test the these things. Then textile materials are used to it's a substrate material or a conductive material that uh, that is uh, part of uh, cloths. So fabric should be wearable, durable, and flexible. The use of uh, textile requires characterization of uh, their properties. The textile materials generally have very low dielectric constant, which reduces the surface wave losses and improve the appearance bandwidth of the antenna. So the influence of this performance of this uh, excellent antenna, these are some of the factors like uh, permittivity. So, permittivity uh, normally epsilon is epsilon naught, epsilon naught, epsilon naught is the free space uh, in relative permittivity, epsilon naught. The last tangent, so last tangent is epsilon uh, double dash by epsilon dash. So, uh, this the dielectric properties depend on the frequency, temperature, surface roughness, and then moisture content and purity uh, and of the materials. So these are the uh, different uh, fabric materials, uh, epsilon R and uh, last tangent uh, is uh, tabulated. So felt and uh, cardura, cotton, polyester, quartz fabric, and uh, cardura, or ly lycra, silk, then uh, queen, panama, jeans, then uh, uh, mole skin. So these are the different uh, uh, fabric, then uh, these are the epsilon R values, these are the last tangent. And then uh, the thickness of the dielectric fabrics, suppose it is a very low dielectric values, the thickness mainly determines bandwidth as well as the input thickness of the antenna. So bandwidth is uh, directly proportional to 1 by Q, Q factor. So thickness of the substrate also influences the geometry sizing of the antenna. And then uh, the electrical surface resistivity. So surface resistivity rho s equal to 1 by that is the conductivity sigma into t that is uh, then rho is surface uh, resistivity then t is the thickness of the material then uh, moisture content of the fabrics uh, regain and then rh uh, that is moisture present in air or moisture needs to uh, saturate air then mechanical deformation of the dielectric and the conducting fabrics like uh, bending elongation so elastic elasticity of the fabrics is an uh, inconvenience as it uh, makes difficult the precious definition uh, cut off the shape of the components. So these are the textile materials used in wearable antennas like uh, let me show the belt, then uh, cardura, the silk, and then polyester. Uh, even uh, zelt as well as uh, platinum, uh, copper polyester uh, fabric, uh, mainly used as uh, these materials, particularly very most of the researchers are used or uh, designed these textile antennas and uh, why uh, we need patch antenna for uh, wearable textile antennas so it is a high directivity then ease of con construction then cost effectiveness then isolation between radiating elements and the body so these are the simple rectangular patch antenna so the length and width and uh, these are the uh, fractional length and uh, the uh, two sides and then this is the length and width so these are the general equations available in plan is you know the wl uh, effective relative permittivity, so all the, the equations. And then uh, the uh, textile fabrication methods are only say, liquid textile and the same. 
another one is a conductive spray technique using the spray uh, things we can uh, spray the uh, different uh, materials using the technique technique and then uh, point wise the deposition of uh, conductive adhesive so this adhesive is, is placed at particular points only on the fabric and mechanical stability is significantly worse as compared to the textile adhesive second drawback of this method is uh, the antenna patch is not uh, perfectly attached uh, for uh, preserving geometry then method of uh, swing so swing uh, sometimes there is a uh, wrinkles can be found on the fabric surface and the wrinkling uh, for minimizing this wrinkling problem the spacing between the seams should be less than at uh, 2 cm This method deposits a thin layer on the conductive textile by ironing. Even uh, using the iron uh, box itself, we can uh, uh, do. But uh, the copper tap method, so this, this is the simplest technique for, of fabrication of the textile antenna. This copper tap is directly applied to the sub, uh, substrates. So there is uh, no need of extra fabrication process in this method. <coughs> so these are the, some of the designs. The fa fabrication with the uh, textiles of this uh, patch antenna using the different textiles like uh, jeans material, silk, all those uh, things we uh, did. These are the applications of wearable heat textiles. And these are some of the prototypes flexible conductive uh, traces. So, here this is the spiral antenna with the cloth uh, design. And then this is the stretchable and flexible prototype using this uh, uh, the uh, e-textile embroidery pattern. Then uh, this is the the colorful prototype with the different uh, 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 textile material with the embroidery based one. And so this can be used to smart uh, uh, even hats as well as for. Uh, deep brain neuro sensing also we can use and then wound detection fabrics then uh, uh, space suit also this is the main applications of this uh, uh, antennas even the space suit we can uh, <coughs> mount this patch antenna using this nickel copper uh, uh, rip stump was selected as the best material for the patch and ground and uh, so this one uh, using that uh, laser and system we can fabricate and uh, this is the bending in a textile antennas so we can uh, this is also using this uh, ism band we can uh, the denim textile can be used so uh, denim is uh, is 1.6 last time is 0 0.01 or 2.4 gigas and thickness is 2 millimeter and connecting materials like copper nickel and plated uh, uh, polyester fabrics can be used and surface resistivity is 0 0.07 uh, ohms and then the thickness is 0.5 millimeter. So this is the antenna uh, for bending scenario that is uh, uh, the width as well as uh, lengthwise uh, it is shown and this is the, the resonance uh, uh, and the reflection coefficient of this uh, uh, flat as well as the bending effect. Then electro EBG structures also. So EBG structure always referred as a photonic man cap structure surface or high impedance surface. So the structure is compact, compact with uh, which has a good potential uh, to build low profile and high efficiency antenna surface. The main advantage of EBG structure is their ability to su suppress the surface wave current. And this is the another design uh, antennas, the simple monopole antenna. So the, this one using the felt fabric, and then uh, the felt fabric is epsilon is 1.38, thickness is 1.1 millimeter. The overall size is 57 by 68 by 1.1 millimeter, and this is the uh, reflection coefficient. So when uh, EBG and without EBG, so these are the uh, reflection coefficient, radiation characteristics. Then the SAR comparison. So SAR is very high for this EBG uh, without EBG. With EBG is uh, less than uh, 1.6 uh, per 1 gram of tissue or 2.1 GRX. So the wearable antennas uh, uh, play a uh, uh, pivotal role in wireless on-body centric communications. 
The fabrication techniques and materials used in designing textile antennas play a significant role in defining the and determining the overall performance and placing the textile antenna conform to certain parts of the human body uh, degrade performance slightly by introducing frequency detuning and hence the performance deformation at the resonant frequency. And uh, so some of our uh, the research, uh, another some research contributions I will, I will show you, for, uh, particularly for the textile antennas for wearable uh, applications. You know, see what is the main difference uh, between this conventional as well as this flexible uh, wearable antennas. Uh, conventional antennas uh, for uh, particular applications, we can use the uh, different wire antennas, uh, rock periodic inbound antennas, reflector antennas, aperture antennas, microstrip antennas. But in flexible antennas, we cannot use uh, this same uh, concept or same materials. So uh, that's why I shown this patch antenna. So patch antennas for conventionally, so three uh, layers. One is a ground player and electric and patch antenna, the uh, connecting patch. So all these three uh, flexible in this uh, flexible wearable antennas, all should be uh, the bending effect must be needed. So that's why we need to use the flexible materials. Also, the, this uh, wireless body area improvement is required the uh, flexible uh, wearable antennas. Uh, so, for that, we need to consider already uh, set the SAR also, and then uh, the frequency bands like mix band and the ISM band UWB. These three only uh, available in the literature. So, these are the, some wearable antennas for wireless applications. This is a scope of flexible. Already said types of flexible polymer based, textile based, carbon nanotube based antennas, microfluid is based antennas. And these are the steps for implementing flexible. One is antenna design, uh, then uh, the design requirements, and then material selection, then simulation the results, and then uh, fabrication experimental validation. So these are the five steps is required for the designing of these flexible antennas. So, <coughs> so we can use uh, this is the electromagnetic simulation tools, one is the ANSYS uh, HFSS, the CST micro studio, even TECO also can be used. In TECO also, these uh, human models are available in TECO also. Here, the first uh, design we did uh, this one, so uh, for uh, the flexible, with the PDMS we used. So, bottom copper layer also we uh, uh, printed like this design. So, another uh, design is like uh, this monopole. Uh, Antenna. So here also you can see the bending uh, radius is three millimeter. <coughs> so, so these are the materials can be considered for this uh, flexible. Whether it's both uh, this polymer-based substrates like liquid crystal polymer LCP, then PDMS uh, polydimethyl uh, methyl oxygen, then uh, polyether the PA, then polythene uh, terra. Catalyte and then PET, then PTF, so poly terra ethylene, then PEG, and textile materials like fabrics and jeans cloths also can be used for this flexible material. And then uh, for validation of uh, polymer substrates like mechanical strength, then dielectric properties like dielectric constant, last tangents can be considered, and then equipment. DK probe kit is used as for the, uh, the SAR value, all those things. Then material uh, like uh, copper foils, conductive fabrics, conductive uh, inks using nanoparticles like copper, silver, nickel, and graphene. Then conductivity of the materials uh, should be evaluated. Nanoparticle analysis can be presented using scanning electron microscope, SEM. And then equipment uh, like conductivity meter, then same, uh, scanning electron microscope is required. And then uh, Usage of anti oxidation process and then usage of uh, flexible and elastic polymer based conductive layers. And this is the, the example already uh, uh, proposed to design. So, this one uh, can be kept on the arm of uh, this uh, human uh, hand. So, here you can observe that when flat is uh, hitting minus 33 uh, dB, when uh, bended, it is uh, reducing because of this uh, human. Uh, uh, relative permittivity considered with that, so uh, the effect is uh, very less. So the loss is more. Then, uh, similarly, uh, so this is the surface current wave uh, for SAR value. So SAR already told us that the 1.38, and then uh, after uh, uh, this one, this got reduced like uh, 0 0.438. 
watts. So this are radiation characteristics of this proposed antennas. And this is the refraction coefficient for this uh, one. When we changed the radius, uh, 3 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 5 millimeter, then I can uh, see this uh, minus 20, minus 22, minus that 40, uh, like that. So, my, so minus, that is 3D. But here you can observe uh, this is somewhat uh, the bandwidth is less compared to this uh, other two things. This is the radiation characteristics of this uh, proposed one. When uh, uh, for 0 degree, 90 degrees, uh, we can change. And uh, the, the human model, you can see this uh, radiation characteristics is like this. So the fabrication, direct flexible materials like lodges. See, nowadays, the flexible materials available even for lodges itself. Even this conventional uh, material like the 5880, Epsilon R 2.2, the 3006, That is uh, already that um, the solid materials are available. That same things nowadays, even flexible materials are also available. In case of textiles, it's easily available. Cloth materials, uh, conductive threads, and fabrics can be used. In case of polymers, some polymers are available for direct using, other uh, can, others can be prepared for, by following simple steps. And then uh, conductive uh, inks are available for use of, or uh, can be prepared based on the requirements. We already shown this PDMS uh, uh, substrate can be made using this uh, elastomers process in the laboratory itself. The equipment for above process on is we need a, a weighing machine and overhead stirrer uh, and then vacuum the uh, the secator setup and then uh, oven is required, then uh, bakers, steering yards, gloves, hot air dryer, molds, tool kits for removal of uh, polymers. Then al altering polymer with uh, uh, impurities. So oxides like uh, Fe3O4, B8, uh, TaO3, TaO2, GO, all those uh, uh, materials like uh, polymer materials are required uh, uh, for this one. And then uh, Printing antenna uh, design and substrate. So, in case of a copper foil, so first initially we have to develop the CAD design can be given for electrical uh, discharge machine. Uh, then uh, EDM mills in accurate cutting of intended design, and uh, afterwards the conductive part can be attached to the substrate using uh, binders. So, EDM machine is required for uh, this one. So, electrical discharging machine is required for this uh, printing this antenna then conductive nanoparticles for developing the carbon nanotube antenna so in case of nanoparticles link things we can use a roll uh, to roll printing screen printing deposition techniques material uh, printers and spraying methods and then uh, we need to pref uh, prefer materials printers like uh, uh, die matrix printer so dmp uh, 2850 is required then controllable pressure spray gun then uh, Embroidered machine in case of conductive uh, threads. <coughs> so these are the whatever we developed uh, in our uh, uh, research groups, uh, like uh, using the HFSS modules, uh, uh, developed different uh, things. And uh, these are the some of the uh, addiction problem like uh, hydrophobic and hydro uh, like before printing the conductive part. And also for this uh, plasma surface treatment machine is required and then uh, masking the unwanted regions like uh, grow the SUV8 masks using deposition uh, process we need uh, this uh, equipment. Here you can see this very very small uh, and one monopole antenna so after the whatever previously showed that. So this are uh, using this uh, portable uh, BNA we measured uh, this one, the, the S11, and uh, here also you can see this the flexible antenna with the RFID and inject printer. And uh, so, these are the results, uh, these are the parameters we have to check like reflection coefficient, VSWR field analysis, impedance gain, variation patterns, efficiency, specific abstraction data, and then. Um, uh, if you want to analyze so the other parameters, like same analysis also we can do, then conductive analysis over the different ratios, and then like dielectric property comparative analysis, flat bending comparison, then on body of body comparison, then application oriented performance, 
it is required we have to select and that these are the equipments are needed uh, for this uh, uh, design like a polymer preparation setup it can be purchased to cost around uh, 60k because uh, we need to purchase for first uh, all the, uh, the materials and the chemicals and then embroidery machine around 50k and edm cutting uh, prefer house uh, outsourcing and then for mask file cutting printing machines so that is uh, 30k to 50k is required and material filter dmp model around 5 lakhs is required and then the spray can set up 15k and then the sm image is preferred outsourcing because it is a very costly one so sm uh, equipment and then dk pro kit given on frequency range some few lakhs is required and network analyzer given on frequency few lakhs or some few pros also available depends upon the frequency range and anakai chamber for uh, uh, we, we prefer some outsourcing or uh, if you have you can measure in your own institute and then conductive meter prefer outsourcing that's very costly and then polymer even clack and strengthen clack prefer outsourcing then uh, flexible some of the uh, research applications it is useful for confound bodies there are very sports monetary surveillance emergency uh, responding medical applications diagnostics and therapy implants endoscopy even uh, some uh, sensors and then for uh, mo uh, motion detection, uh, uh, speed sensing, pH level, blood glucose monitoring sensors, wearable skins for uh, remote movements, uh, then supportive wearable devices for elderly and uh, handicapped people and then uh, displays, flexible electronics and then uh, PCB devices, making the energy harvesting as absorbers, then uh, uh, TNGs, all those things. So I think this uh, can uh, Close this talk. So now we can open for queries. Uh, any questions from the audience? Session is open for the discussion. Sir, in previous session there were uh, there was a question why uh, the pork tissue is being used actually pork uh, uh, tissues somewhat equivalent with the human tissues that are uh, relative permittivity so that's why considered pork tissues okay. for the comparison is uh, any questions Sir, uh, I personally wish to ask uh, uh, any vendors about uh, these flexible materials uh, the Rogers is providing, right? Any specific vendors are available in India? Uh, no, sir. Actually, see, uh, that, uh, Rogers is available very well, you know. Other yeah. things, uh, so we have to prepare, sir, that uh, uh, things. Otherwise, if you want to purchase, uh, the cost is very high, sir. The PDMS and all, if you want need to purchase, means they will say some. Uh, few lakhs like that okay. they will uh, sell by like one uh, IF4 sheet uh, or like that only no so they will charge more so we we need to prepare ourselves then only cost will uh, get reduced okay, okay. okay. Uh, further any questions before closing the session for today hello sir uh, yes Sir, you have shown starting uh, in the starting, you have shown some substrate uh, preparation video. Ah, yes, ma'am. And just now also, you said that uh, we need to prepare the substrate uh, the, because there are no specific vendors. Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, so, is there any um, no, no, that no, video? Only, no, no, initially was shown uh, from one laboratory actually, PDMS uh, preparation, how to make PDMS with the. Uh, yes some uh, research laboratory only i shown that one there is no specific vendors is there in uh, abroad some uh, people are making this pdm they are selling but the cost is uh, high ma'am that is the problem you can it is very well available but the cost is high oh, okay sir uh, you suggested that uh, only we need to purchase some chemicals and uh, whenever we go for some fabrication 
like institutes they will prepare like that yeah you see if uh, some uh, and nano fabrication laboratories are there so if you give your uh, the requirements they will make the materials and they, they will give it to you know even in uh, iic bangalore they are uh, doing and then uh, iit madras also they are doing in the material uh, material uh, science laboratory they are making so you can uh, there you can purchase cost is somewhat uh, comparatively less okay sir okay sir. thank okay. you sir. okay any any questions i hope uh, all the questions are addressed uh, again once again i take this opportunity on behalf of balwinder sir and netter chandigarh to thank professor shanmuganathan for having a wonderful session he has explicitly given a very informative session and he has touched various research problems on variable and flexible antennas he has also elaborated different fabrication techniques he has touched imp implantable antennas he has touched challenges what are challenges definitely a researchers uh, will be benefited from this uh, once again i thank professor for having a wonderful session have a nice day yeah, thank, thank you. you thank you sir thank you thank you very much thank you very much sir so okay. we'll be closing out the session yes sir yes sir yeah, yes. okay okay thank, okay, you, very thank you very much thank you everyone thank you sir uh, anyone from nitter here uh, can stop the recording please mr ganesh uh, sankar ganesh uh, and uh, gurpreet uh, will mail you the code because right now it is not available with me so we'll mail you the code for google classroom i'll inform someone to mail you the code harjot is there harjot could you please put recording off हाँ सर सेशन हो गया है रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ करना था जी 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 यस जी सर हो गया ठीक ठीक हो गया हाँ हाँ अच्छा हुआ सर वेरी इन्फॉर्मेटिव चलो गुड थैंक यू है आपका भी थैंक यू आपने हैंडल कर लिया थैंक यू वेरी मच सर कोई बात नहीं कोई बात नहीं सर बस वो रिकॉर्डिंग ऑन है ना अभी सेशन तो क्लोज आउट हो गया है उसको ऑफ कर हरजत शायद ऑनलाइन नहीं है हाँ 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 ओके वो मैं करवा देता हूँ थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू